with no offense meant to the Christians, according to all that crap that's going on in my community, um, this video could get me crucified. <laughs> and, and when I say that, what I mean is I am acknowledging I could get some serious negative backlash. And as a marginalized, racialized, oppressed, indigenous person, you think about those things. That's oppression and internalized oppression. Like, is it worth saying it? Can I handle the backlash? I just wanted to share this today because I don't think I'm the only one that looks at it this way. Maybe I am. You're going to have to tell me. What I'm talking about is people. And are they all good or all bad? Or somewhere in the middle? Let's talk about it. Hi, everybody. My name is Sandy Boucher. I'm Red Thunderbolt Woman of the Loon Clan, a proud member of Seine River First Nation in Treaty 3 Territory in Northern Ontario. And what I'm talking about today is a phrase you've heard me say a hundred times, take the best, leave the rest, right? And it's my mom's teaching of when, even when, Someone passes away. Forgive them their shortcomings. Take the best of what they taught you and take that on your journey. So it guarantees that you are so much more than the link before in your bloodline. And your bloodline is getting stronger and healthier with each generation. So, but I take that to another level. And this is, <laughs> so I guess it's cancel culture to a certain extent. We see people in the media, we need, we see academics or professionals or social media influencers or activists, whatever the case may be. And they may have some really good things to share. But if they share that one bad thing, they're out of there. Or worse, if there's someone in the news, just got to adjust this little screen thing here. If there's someone in the news because of the bad thing, and then you find something good, they said, <laughs> prepare yourself for the backlash. So I know this happened. So... I'm going to throw out some names to you and then you're going to totally understand what I mean. So, Jordan Peterson. This happened, I honestly didn't know who he was. Not someone I follow, not the academic world I live in. And I had written a blog post, which may be in my last book, come to think of it. Yeah. And I reference now I did what I always do. I saw a quote online. Wow, it sparked a revelation or some learning or some healing in me. So I sat down and wrote a blog post about it and I shared it. And it was a Jordan Peterson quote. And this was after I don't think it was really close to, but it was after all of the backlash over his comments about Elliot Page. And to be crystal clear here, the comments concerning Elliot Page were out of line and wrong, and there should have been backlash. I am not defending that, what Jordan Peterson did. But the quote I referenced was a really good quote that made sense to me. And I look at the quote as the quote, not 
who said it. So I'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I'm not throwing out like he is not all bad now that he has never said anything useful in his time. Um, I don't know. He may say more bad things than good, but the quote I found resonated. So I released it and I definitely got some backlash, but I stand by that because I'm taking the best and leaving the rest. I, I would be the first to condemn the stupid comments, the, the racist comments, the transphobic comments. I'm also going to give you kudos if you write something that totally resonates with me because, because I'm not all perfect. I'm not all bad. Hmm? Another one. Um, <laughs> this is more recent in the news. And now I spend a lot of time on YouTube, not just shooting videos. This is, I don't subscribe to, I don't have cable. I don't subscribe to streaming services. I just cruise around on YouTube. Always, always interesting things to find. And because I was raised in poverty, without money and had no idea how to manage money when I started making it. Any kind of financial guru, oops, my phone's not on silent, sorry about that. Any kind of financial advice or financial guru that I find probably going to get my attention at least for a little while. That is no shot against Millie, my amazing financial advisor who I do the New Path podcast with. Um, obviously, when it comes to an actual decision with my investments, I'm going to Millie. But as far as I handle my day-to-day -day money, I'm growing, I'm learning, I'm open to advice. And because of that, I recently found Dave Ramsey. Now, <laughs> um, I was watching him for the financial advice, the 10 minutes videos. It became obvious fairly quickly that he's a Christian, whatever. I'm not going to hold that against you. He is actually an evangelical Christian in the U S okay. A little couple warning bells going off. <laughs> and then I, I was like, hmm, I started to hear the controversy around Dave Ramsey. And I was like, uh Oh, <laughs> what happened? Did some Google searching and, and firing an employee because they engaged in premarital sex. Uh, definitely let me shocked. Uh, now there's a fraud, I think a class action suit actually concerning fraud. The video I watched had good financial advice. So do I think all that other stuff is wrong and should have never happened? Of course I do. The financial advice in that video was correct. So that's how I look at it. I just don't go around judging people or condemning people or, well, that's not true. The Thundercats <laughs> because everything I'm certain they might even be decent people in real life, but their routine is incredibly dangerous to indigenous people. If you haven't seen that video, you can I'll put a link here somewhere. Um, so that's how I look at it. How do you look at it? Do you just totally, that person said something wrong? The other thing related, not exactly on point, but close. Um, I absolutely refuse to condemn someone for something they did 20 years ago. Because I don't know about you. Have you changed in 20 years? I know I have. And the reason I do that is really crystal clear. If we don't give people enough space to grow, learn, and change, there is no incentive to change. If you did something stupid when you're 20 and you're going to be condemned for it for the rest of your life, why not keep doing it? You're going to be condemned anyways. We have to always hold space, which is why I do not hate non-Indigenous Canadians. Has horrific things been done to Indigenous people? Absolutely, but I'm holding the space for people to change because that's the incentive to change. Here's your chance. I'm going to let you walk through this door. I'm going to believe that we can work together because not believing it closes the door and sentences us to what we have now. And that just doesn't work. So what do you think? 
And feel free to throw names at me in the comments. I, I, I may not know them, um, but let's have the conversation. I'd be interested. Like, do you like block, delete, and have I done that? It depends how, I don't know. I was going to say it depends how horrific it is, but then, then, I don't listen to Jordan Peterson, by the way, because <laughs> I came across that quote. I wasn't searching out a Jordan Peterson quote. And I think what he said about Elliot Page, yeah, that did cross the line. So, uh, but I look at the words, not the author. I'm all about the quote. And if a quote resonates and it inspires some kind of healing or growth, that's exciting to me. Even if I don't know who said it. Does that make sense? I hope that made sense. I'd love to hear what you think. Comment below. One more video tomorrow. Totally, completely different. Um, by request. I think my Friday videos are becoming these different videos. But I hope you'll enjoy it. Because it's definitely a question I get asked all the time. And the question is about my tattoo. Until tomorrow. I love you. Take care. Bye-bye.